Hello there, Alan speaking here, and this is my Mortal Kombat Random Stories for the original arcade version I'm talking about, not the Sega or the SNES version, as it was the SNES version I owned. But I don't really want to talk about it, I want to talk about the one I experienced and the one that left an impact on me as a fighting game. Anyway, in the same arcade where I first played Street Fighter 2 and experienced that game, they got a new game in, which was Mortal Kombat. We arrived there to find this huge queue outside the arcade. Now we already had a Super Nintendo at this point and had Street Fighter but we still went out on Saturdays to this arcade to play random games every now and again, especially Street Fighter. So my dad went and took this queue that was stretched outside and put our money into the machine and we sat there playing for quite a while and then he ended up getting to the top of the queue. And I remember at the time us playing with the characters and all of a sudden stopping to him calling us over. You can imagine leaving the credits in the machine and just running straight over to him. And I remember at that time we were just behind one more person and I couldn't believe it. This big, massive red arcade machine which looked like Jean Claude Van Damme on the side of it. The first thing we saw was Scorpion getting his ass kicked and the guy was just sitting there taking it. I guess he didn't know how to play it because it was new. And he got knocked straight into the pit. That was the first thing I saw Scorpion get knocked into the pit and everyone cheer. Everyone was cheering anyway, but that bit, oh my god, I sat there in shock. It was then our go, and I remember thinking of that poster, So Real It Hurts. It did hurt. That scared me. I mean, he said finish him. He lost the fight, so he got killed for it. Hmm. Very happy Saturday I had. Anyway, I decided to have a look at the characters thinking they resembled people I know or films I've seen and I guess that's what they were going for to sort of get you interested I mean Kano himself looking like Terminator that's the first thing I noticed and I thought who's this monster guy at the top all these colourful little pictures and excuse the frame rate here as it was bugging up while I was trying to record this I decided to record the main version as opposed to recording the arcade collection and I played it like this, I was just throwing random kicks and punches not knowing how to fight at all on the game. I then later got better at it and I remember the first time I saw a fatality, something that was taken out of the SNES version that I later got. But in the Sega version that you could have the blood cheat, it was fine but was never as shocking as this. It went dark, loud music appeared and it went silent. You killed him for losing the fight. I then later on ended up watching the rest of them, only to be sitting there in disbelief at all the violence that was appearing in front of me on the game. And the first thing I wondered, were they real people? I thought it was a video I was watching at first. Because straight from cartoon sprites to real animation to real people, I didn't know what it was that was going on. I thought graphics had all of a sudden taken the next step. I originally thought it was Japanese people that made the game instantly due to the advancements I saw straight away. From Street Fighter cartoony feel to this straight away shocked me. A woman that seemed like Cynthia Rothrock, a female character, which was the only female character in Mortal Kombat 1. And yeah, Johnny Cage was like Van Damme out of Bloodsport, he was kind of dressed the same. In fact, I thought it was him. And Raiden looked like some crazy lampshade. I then later found out he was a Thunder God and I was terrified of him. Everything in this game was loud and fast. The Bruce Lee clone, which was Liu Kang. Oh my god. That's probably the best way to do this fatality, to be honest with you, as he's meant to be the hero. It reminded me of tournaments, like Enter the Dragon, Bloodsport. A lot of men in small, tight clothing. Wow, crazy times. But if you know what I mean, it was all tournament based. Who could believe the movie coming out to be such a success? We all couldn't believe our fucking eyes when this film came out. It was so true to the game. It's a shame it couldn't be said for Street Fighter, really. Oh well. Anyway, I'm going to start it like this. I'm not going to review every character because it is not a review. It's just me talking about the game, as you know. I'm going to choose Kano, which at first I used to think he was like a Terminator clone or something to do with that. Being as it was around the same time Terminator 2 came out, I think so anyway. And I remember seeing that red eye and metal face, and that he could throw blades and do some Sonic the Hedgehog shit. And Scorpion, 
I remember the first time he threw a spear at you thinking, what the hell? He threw a blade into you with some rope and told you to get over here. Get the fuck over here. That was craziness. And as I watch a lot of martial art movies, I actually thought that was Cynthia Rothrock playing Sonya. And I know it isn't, and but as a kid, it's the first thing you're going to think. I thought it was that they put all of the famous martial artists into one game. Or should I say movie, as I thought it was a movie at the time. Crazy moves. I remember Test Your Might. Again, like the bonus stage on Street Fighter, only in a more tournament style, I guess. And the pit stage. This stage was the first thing I saw on Mortal Kombat, making it terrifying for me. It was scary knowing that you were playing on edge on a thin platform and a pit of spikes below, knowing that one of you is going to take that plunge. You just never knew who it would be and what was down there. As I saw the blades itself, it kind of scared me to the point where I looked away seeing your character getting knocked off. I was actually in shock. Little did I know later on, in different revisions, they added a hidden character. And I've found this hidden character on every version of the game, including the arcade collection, the PS2, Deception version of Mortal Kombat 1. And then on to Raiden, the crazy stage 2. And I'm going to mention this, with Raiden himself, he was a thunder god, a scary character because he shouted when he went for you and done moves. But seeing Shang Tsung in the background clapping when you won or whoever won a game and looking at you as you moved away, the stages on this game added to the atmosphere and the music. The music was some of the best music ever. And being a huge fan of Bruce Lee, I actually thought they got a guy to act like Bruce Lee to be Bruce Lee, but they called him different names. Now I never knew why that was, but I went along with it, being a little kid and all kind of strange they banned children from going to play these games after a while even though they made the best money well it's not strange it's pretty obvious why and then onto a mirror match which you didn't see in the original Street Fighter 2 you couldn't play the same person until Champion Edition and a bunch of Sonic the Hedgehog shit here going on but I like every version of Mortal Kombat 1 it's got a rawness to it and as I was saying about the hidden character I think it was one of the first games to actually put that in you see the shadows going past the moon? It was a certain event you could get, and it was very random. You had to get a double flawless victory, meaning not getting hit, or should I say a perfect. Twice, knocking them off the pit didn't work, so you had to do a fatality. You had to. And people thinking the pit was a fatality, it wasn't. So once you did a fatality, got the double flawless, you were good to go. just that sound and the light flashing to know that you're gonna fight this scary guy. I remember the first time I fought him because I did see him jump down and give me a message. I can't remember what, it, what one it was he said. I'm not gonna show the fight as it's on my YouTube channel anyway so give it a look. Then on to the double matches or actually they're called endurance matches and I'm gonna use Scorpion want to get these through so I can fight Goro a bit easier and you can hear Goro screaming in the background I was terrified wondering what he looked like I could hear him and hear his footsteps because I played it on the arcade first and even on the SNES version it still creeped me out but just to hear that going on in the background and then winning this fight to think you're gonna fight one of the bosses what are they like are they strong are they hard to kill what what can they do you know you're used to just human beings fighting each other which you did on this, and I noticed the screen didn't go dark. What could we expect? After this ladder, what happens next? And I literally shit my fucking pants when he jumped out in front of me. I was like, what the hell is that? And the first time I did, he grabbed me, smashed the crap out of me. And what could you do? It was one of them things that, when you first fought Goro, you got smashed again, and again, and again. But, doing this video, I decided to try a few things out, and knowing how to beat Goro and played it a lot of times, I developed this little trick, which is knocking him down and throwing the spear, hence why I'm playing the scorpion. And I actually get a double flawless. Well, he wins the first round, I almost beat him, but I get a double flawless on him, so that's always good, something new. But he was a scary character, he could take your health in a matter of seconds. That's the thing about Mortal Kombat, it was very large, scary, and I mean scary, it terrified me. Loud, very sharp, and very realistic and true to life. 
I know blood doesn't splash in the air when you get a punch in the head. But at the time, you couldn't believe it. You knew it felt like an adult's game and you shouldn't be playing it. And there's this little hidden game over screen. Again, a lot of hidden things are in this game. It's if you lose a certain amount of times, and you can imagine I lost a lot to see this. And during the years, I actually found out that if you keep getting this game over screen, over the times when you're meant to play versus Reptile, you'll see shadows going past the moon, just like you would trying to fight Reptile. Look at this. I've seen that a few times on every version, as I've played every version. And then on to Shang Sun. And what he does is he morphs into any one of the characters you fought previously. Although he may seem easy, he's not. But I did always find Goro to be a lot harder. And kind of funny, he actually does turn into Goro, which is creepy. Because you don't expect it, you don't know who he's going to turn into. And he's quite quick for an old fella. It's a shame he doesn't do as many moves as the other characters. And you can't do a fatality on him, which is a shame. But right, he blows up anyway. And just on this stage alone, seeing the skeleton in the background hanging up, you know, it's like if you lose, this is your fate. You're getting killed anyway. And you're going to kill them if you win. So, an epic adventure, or should I say battle, towards the end, you get a good victory and a sense of achievement beating this game. I thought it had some of the greatest endings and some of the greatest music. Very mysterious music and well suited to the game and the stages. I play every Mortal Kombat to this day, but I think this one happens to be my favourite. It's probably the only one you actually get to see Scorpion's face at the end. Every character has an in intro and an ending, which if you watch them all, it's quite good. You get to see the story, a bit about the character, and you want to know more. Everyone waited for Mortal Kombat 2 after that. But having the SNES version and later playing the Sega Mega Drive version, I always preferred the arcade version just for what it was. I played every version, I even had the plug and play version, and I played them to this day, all the time. Even Midway Arcade Treasures, I had that on the PSP, and I played that all the time. I went on holiday and took it with me, I just loved Mortal Kombat 1 for its rawness. And these characters here, just seeing them all together, just it had such a uniqueness about it. Just It was small, there weren't much on it, but a lot of hidden content. And for what it was, what they did add into it, if you look back at it now, you can see how surprising it was. There was nothing like this at its time. And I guess it probably started off violence in video games, and it started the ratings in games, I believe. I remember going to get Mortal Kombat 2, only to be told that I wasn't allowed. But getting Mortal Kombat on the SNES, even though it wasn't the same, I still loved it for its music. And the Sega Genesis version, I say Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, same thing. But that one, I like the fatality side of it, but the music and actually owning the copy for the Super Nintendo was better for me. I didn't play the Sega Mega Drive version until about a year after the release, and then I still didn't even know the code till a friend told me about it. So I wasn't too impressed, it didn't really matter to me. I just used to go to an arcade when I could find it, or a local chip shop that had it, and played it. Just one of them things that has always stuck with me now. And it's probably why I'm into violent video games and so crazy today. But if you play any of the Mortal Kombat games, you can play this on MAME or get the Mortal Kombat Arcade Collection for the Xbox 360 and PS3. You can get all three of them in one bundle. I mean, there's a bit of a sound change and some changes, but give it a go. I bet you'll like it. And try Mortal Kombat 1. Anyway, until next time, goodbye.